Good morning for me. Welcome back to the channel. This is a new video on Remix Run. Specifically, we're going to be talking about integrating AWS Amplify with Remix Run with the focus on um, authentication and focusing on querying back some data from a database that I've set up. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole process of setting up an Amplify backend. There's plenty of videos that cover it. I'm just going to show you how, once you have a backend set up, how you can um, leverage specifically what I'm using here is this uh, Amplify UI and I'm focusing on this connected component authenticator so what we're going to do is we're going to show how to use this authenticator to sign in to create accounts and then once you have an authenticated user how you're able to kind of query data out of the Amplify database and so that's what we're covering in this video um, the pattern that we're using here is very similar to the previous video that I did on um, integrating Firebase so you know hopefully take a look at that one if you're integrated at Firebase but what I figured is that once you kind of understand the pattern it's a lot easy to start to duplicate these things and so I figured let's give uh, Amplify a try to kind of validate my assumption so um, if you've never been here before please subscribe if you have or you haven't please subscribe make sure you like and share this video and um, let's get to the code thanks Okay, so before we get to the code, we're just going to do a quick run through for the application for people who aren't familiar with the uh, Amplify UI. It's basically this graphical UI that you can use to kind of um, simplify a lot of the user management stuff around um, using Amplify as your backend. Right now, I'm just supporting regular email and password, but you can also do social media passwords. The forgot your password link, it's all integrated, it's awesome. And then also, um, you can handle uh, create accounts. All this stuff you get from just packaging and configuring um, this authenticator UI in your application. Not going to spend too much time going through how that's done because, once again, if you take a look at their documentation here, they kind of walk through kind of the quick start. So the first part is here this pre prerequisite of creating your authentication backend, which, like I said, I'm not going to cover. It's already covered. Um, but here's just kind of the gist of what you're doing. Um, in React, you're loading in the library, the overall Amplify library, you're loading in the Authenticator, which is the UI, you're loading in some styles, you get your exports, which you get when you set up your back end, and then you just kind of wrap your whole app with this Authenticator, and that's basically what I'm doing. So now let's, let's take a look how you actually go through that. Well, before I do that, let's kind of just quickly run through the app. So I already have an account created, I enter my email, my password, I sign in and now I'm on a private page and I've actually, this is data that I've queried from my backend database in, um, in Amplify. Um, and so if we take a look, this is my tasks path. And so now if I kind of log out and I try to get back to my tasks path, It's just redirecting me back here to my authentication page because I'm not authenticated. I don't have an authenticated user. Um, so now let's take a look at what we're actually doing inside of the code. Like I do with most of my videos, I'll also post all the source code um, on, on the blog and with a few comments to kind of explain what's going on. But let's kind of start at the beginning and take a look at our root. So here we are in root.jsx. Once again, following the pattern that you saw with your normal documentation, bring in Amplify, bring in my configuration, loading in the styles, bring in the Authenticator UI, configuring Amplify. Here's where we're using links to kind of bring in that Amplify style sheet. I'm also using semantic uh, UI CSS for my UI, so I got to bring that in here too. And then here inside an app, basically I'm wrapping everything in this Authenticator provider. Excuse me. That will give me access to use the um, the hooks that exist around Authenticator to to get access to the logged in user, get access to the Authenticator, and a bunch of other stuff. So that's what that is for. I it looks like I so let's just go to the other files and make sure we didn't change anything. So there's nothing in my entry server. There's nothing new in my entry client. I guess the first place to go would take a look inside of Index. And I stay corrected. What I'm doing here is I'm using this. Um, to me, it's, I, I know I saw some discussions in Discord about looking to see if there's some sort of middleware or something that you can kind of, or a kind of pre-route hook 
to kind of check for authenticated users. Because So that's basically what I'm doing here. This required user ID is basically saying, if I don't have a user session, then redirect to the login route. And so what I'm doing here in my index page is I'm checking, do I have a required, sorry, required user ID? Maybe it could use a better name, but just validating that I have a user session. If I don't have a user session, then I'm throwing an exception and redirecting. If I do, then I just redirect directly to the tasks page. So let's go down a path where I don't, because that's, that's kind of what we're trying to do, try to log in. So I don't have one, so I redirect to my login page. And if you look at my login page, because this is where a lot of the magic is happening, I've kind of wrapped it with this authenticator component. I have the sign out here, but I don't think I'm actually ever using it, but it's there. So I have this thing wrapped with my authenticator component, which is what's bringing up this UI. And so now the way that this UI works is that once I actually have logged in and have an authenticated user, once I've logged in and have an authenticated user, this use authenticator will actually give me back a user. So what I'm doing here in this use effect is I'm listening for when I actually have a user object. And then once I have a user object, then that's when I want to kind of do the remix magic and use their whole session cookie library that they have. And I want to set a um, cookie with all the user information that I got back from the authenticator. So that's so just once again, just to explain what's happening. The authenticator brings up the UI. Once you're actually logged in, you have an authenticated user. This hook will return the user for me. This use effect is actually listening for a change in the user object. It says, oh, I have a user object. So let's set the set, let's set the user session information with that user object. And then we go down here to this function. And then what I'm doing here is I'm using a fetcher. So what, what this is saying is that I get my user passed in. If the fetcher is not doing anything at this point and I have a user, then submit this information to the to, a, to the um, action function for this component. And what I'm doing is I'm passing in the access token and the ID token. So now I come up to my action, fo uh, my action function, and then I'm pulling out of that form data, the data that I needed, the access token, the ID token, and then I'm calling everyone's favorite function uh, this create user session function, I'm passing in the request, I'm passing in the user information, and on success, I'm passing in where I want to redirect to. So let's go take a look at that. So here inside of create, create user session, as I said, a lot of this code is very similar to the code that you will see when you look at um, the, let me go up to the top here, when you look at this whole create cookie session storage um, package as provided by Remix, so let's go back down to where we were. So create user session. Um, we get my session. We set the user information that I just got passed in. Um, I have a redirect passed in, so I redirect to that, and I set the header. And I'm committing the session information. So now what will happen is, and then I redirect to tasks. So let's go take a look at tasks. And you can see here at the top of tasks, in their loader, where's the task loader? It's calling the same function require user ID. It passes in the request and the redirect route. So let's go back to our session server. And if we go back to our session server here, we can see my require user ID. I get my user session information. Um, I confirm that there's, there's actually a user ID in there. If there isn't a user ID, then I redirect. If there is, then I return and I pass the user ID back. I really don't care about the user ID in this implementation. I just want some, some value returned to indicate that everything's okay. So now I've passed this first line. So that means I actually have a validated user. Um, I get the access token, I get the ID token. And then what I'm doing here is um, I'm not using the client API to query the data. I'm getting the uh, AWS access, uh, AWS app sync client. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make GraphQL queries against my data that I have in my data store. And so what I'm doing, th th these are values that came out of my configuration file. So it gives me the endpoint, the region, and then here's, a, here's, the, import, here's the important part that matters. 
I'm getting the access token out of the header that was passed into me. And I'm passing that in as a token for to validate that I'm authenticated to make this API call. That returns my client object. I take my client object. I call my query. I get my data back. And I'm passing a bunch of other stuff back. This is just kind of extra information I don't really need to pass back. And then I'm passing back uh, my data items. And then I do my use loader data. I get my tasks. And I render my tasks. Where am I rendering my tasks? So down here, I'm just looping through and rendering out my tasks. A couple of other things that are happening in here. So for one, I am able to, so what? I, well, what, one thing I'm doing is up here, I'm trying to display the user's name. So what I'm doing, since I'm back on the client side, I'm in the browser, I'm using the client API to get the current user information. And I'm setting user information up here, which set user and user, and then I'm rendering the email address. So let me log in so you can see that. So you can see I've got, that's how I'm getting my user over here. And then what else we got going on here? Oh, we got have the sign out. So on this side, once again, I could use the client or browser-based API to sign out when the user clicks this logout button. So I'm going to sign out, and then I'm going to use my fetcher once again, and I'm just going to do call submit on the action function here, and the action function is to just log out. So I've already signed out locally, but what I want to do is make sure I clear out my session information, so that's what this submit is doing, which then calls my login function, sorry, my logout function, which got passed in from my session server. So let's go back over to my session server and see what we're doing in my logout. And basically in my logout, I'm getting my session information and I'm basically just destroying it all and then returning. And so that's pretty much the process. You know, what, like I said, once you figure this out, the pattern's the same. The idea, once again, is you somehow get some unique identifier that's associated with the session which is what we're getting from the authenticator. You pass that to the server, which is what we're doing to set user session info. Inside a session, I mean, inside a session server, you take that information, you put it in a session cookie, which is what we're doing. And then what you do is for every route, you're validating that you have session information. There's actually, you want to know what? This is probably, as I'm looking at this, this is probably incomplete. Like what I really should be doing in here, what I really should be doing in here is validating the token. And maybe that's what I'll do in a follow-up video is I'll go in and I'll make sure I validate this token because it's quite possible that this token that I have has expired or God knows what, but I really should be doing more than just making sure that it's okay. I should be checking and validating it. And then once it's validated, then I, if we go back to tasks, I'm just using that token for other things. Specifically, up here you can see I check the request ID, I get the response, off the response, I get the tokens, and then I use the tokens for the query. I'm 99% certain that there's another um, uh, AWS, because where is this? I'm 99% certain there's some other... Um, um, SDK call that I can make that will validate my token. Also, I'm noticing uh, something else that I need to mention. Um, I ran into an error with trying to import. So I go here. Oh, not there. Where's my message server? I ran into an error trying to import. It's all the way up at the top. So I tried to import by this. Um, app sync client directly from inside of task and I didn't like it because it needed to be used on the server side so the hack that I had to do and there was actually a note sorry there was actually a note in a remix documentation which I'll include in the blog post which said the trick is to import is to import is to import the information here in session server and then export it out so this is exporting everything from the AppSync AWS library. So then now I'm able to inside of, 
my tasks here, import app sync client, and utilize it in my application. That's basically what I wanted to cover. Um, once again, the kind of the pieces are we're using the authenticator here. We're kind of setting it up to kind of grab us our user session information. Um, once we have our user session information from our authenticator, authenticator told us we have an active user. Now that we have an active user, we are setting our user session information. We're submitting it to the server. And then here on the server, we're creating our user session and saving it. Um, hopefully you found this helpful. Keep a lookout for the uh, source code that's included in a blog post. Maybe kind of step through them one by one next to each other, and that'll kind of help you make sense of what I've done here. Please make sure to kind of uh, drop any comments, suggestions on what I can do to make these videos more informative. And thanks a lot for stopping by, and I will see you next time. Bye now.